Major funding for these broadcasts is made possible by grants from Capital One Bank and Chase Commercial Term Lending, the Wickoff Group, New York Community Bank, M&T Bank, Greenberg Traurig, Perfect Building Maintenance, Genova Burns. Additional funding is provided by grants from AKA Hotels, Corman Communities, Aerial Property Advisors, AVR Realty Company, Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, Bank Leumi USA, Briarwood Organization, CBRE, Citizens Bank, Colliers International NYC, CPEX Real Estate Services, Cushman and Wakefield, Customers Bank, DDG, Dime Savings Bank of Williamsburg, Fisher Brothers, First Nationwide Title Agency, Flushing Bank, Foley and Lardner, Friedman, Handler Real Estate Organization, HAP Investment Developers, Investors Bank, James D. Kuhn Real Estate Institute at Syracuse University, James Orfanides, Chairman US Realty dot com, Kilroy Architectural Windows, New York's Window Company, Madison Realty Capital, Massey Knackle Realty Services, Matone Group, Mercantile Commerce Bank, NA, Meridian Capital Group, Newmark Grubnight Frank, New Banks, MHP Real Estate Services, Optimum Window Manufacturing Corp, People's United Bank, Rosewood Realty Group, SJP Properties, Sterling National Bank, Sterling Risk, Stonehenge Partners, TD Bank, Terra CRG, The Continuum Company, The CUNY TV Foundation, The Moynihan Group, and These Friends. So gaming it's it's a business. It's a business in forty what forty nine of the states. Forty eight states. Forty eight states. It's a big business. How big is it going to be in the state of New Jersey? There's different aspects right now. But today, my guests who were here last week are going to talk a little bit about what's happening in gaming. My guests they include New Jersey Assemblyman Ralph Caputo, Bill Pascarell, who is a principal. I don't want to get it wrong. Princeton Public Affairs Group. Okay. Dennis Dresden. You have a couple of titles, Dennis. <laughs> I'm an attorney in Redneck, New Jersey. I'm also the advisor to Monmouth Park Racetrack. And last but not least, Nick Amato, who is of counsel to the law firm of Genova Burns. So last week we were talking about different aspects of gaming, and something that we didn't get into was let's talk about at Monmouth. You, Monmouth has an involvement with off-track betting. Yes. Monmouth Park is part of the horse racing industry in New Jersey. The value of that industry is a billion dollars. It's about 13,000 jobs. It's about open space, land preservation. Without racing in New Jersey, you would see all that space turn into developments. There would be no more open space, no reason to have farms in the agri-industry. So we look to the state and the legislature, who's been kind to us, to try and help keep and preserve our business. So at Monmouth Park, one of the tools that they gave us uh, was the ability to do off-track wagering. So the three racetracks that remain in the state, which is Monmouth Park, Meadowlands, and Freehold, you know, have the rights to develop off-track wagering in different locations. We have one in Woodbridge that's highly successful, where patrons can go in to an upscale environment. It, now, which is interesting because most people, especially if you're New York City based, you remember the off-track betting of New York City, which was basically a, a parlor where people would stand out there. There was no, no venue. It was just, it was a place where you would make a, a bet. You're talking about a totally different. These are upscale venues with dining and, you know, those venues generate a significant amount of revenue for us. So that the handle, which is the amount bet at an off-track wagering site in Woodbridge, for example, is about $90 million a year, and it provides about $5 million in additional purse money for the horse racing industry and a similar amount for the operator. 
Now, Jeff Gorral, who's the operator of the Meadowlands, built one Bayonne. up in Bayonne. Uh, Monmouth is about to open one in Hillsboro. There are a couple in South Jersey also that are operated by Freehold. There's one in Vineland, one in Tom's River, <clears throat> and one in Gloucester. So Now, but th- the off-track betting can only take bets for the three New Jersey tracks? No, mm-hmm. they bet on every track in the country. And in addition to that, the legislature gave us the ability to do online horse betting. So online horse betting is legal in New Jersey. There's a company. Online for any of the casinos and any of the tracks in the country? Same rules? We, we can take uh, the video signal, the simulcasting from all the tracks in the country, and you can bet on it. So we hired a company that has TV distribution nationwide, and they operate our four New Jersey bet system. New Jersey residents, you have to be a New Jersey resident to bet on the system. As opposed to, to, this, internet. to, to the Internet. Correct. And what happens is that we, through this partnership with a company called TVG, uh, which is a city area of Betfair, um, we grew the business from $90 million to $180 million here in New Jersey. And it's very, very popular. Are these open, the off-track betting, they're open 365 days a year? Or it's Christmas Day and Thanksgiving <laughs> Day, but okay, the three, rest three, of the time. 363. They give the wives a so, break. So, so here's, here's the question. And you can watch on TV at home and bet. You can watch on TV at home and bet? And bet. On the and, internet. And on the internet. So that's very good because Correct. my brother always had to leave the house. <laughs> you know, and, and dinner have, time was very disruptive. You know? And they have apps to do handheld. You know, you can do it on your phone. So if right now I'm hearing that we have in place at least three or four, at the minimum, I mean three major ones, you know, with, uh, with Woodbridge, you know, with the other look. You have the mechanism in place for sports betting at off-track betting facilities, correct? You have the mechanism in place at the casinos, too. No, sports betting is only permitted at the racetracks and casinos, not at the off-track wagering centers. In our okay. online. But sports betting is now allowed in New Jersey? No. No, 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 no it's no. not. Okay, so part of the, as I started the show saying, it's the current and the future right. in gaming. What do you see in the future? Okay, you know, there's legislations, as right. you know, each and every year, as, uh, as Dennis said we last keep pushing. week. We you know, there's the- changes. What, what, if one had my crystal apple, which I have over mm. here, not now, let us say by 2020, mm. five years from now, what do you think the gaming business will look like in the state of New Jersey? There will be expansion of casino gaming outside of Atlantic City, at least to the northern part of the state. There will probably be some revenue shares to make sure racetracks and casinos, with money going back to Atlantic City, to help them will all be preserved. You will see sports betting. It's inevitable. There's no question in my mind that in the timeline of your crystal ball, there will be sports betting permitted in New Jersey. Now. In reality, as I was saying earlier to, to Bill, don't we really have sports betting because we have fantasy sports? Well, sure. I mean, uh, you know, there's a, there's a distinction between sports betting and fantasy and that fantasy has been uh, opined to be a skill game. Um, I want to answer your question, though. I just gave three um, significant uh, speeches in London, Amsterdam, and in Vegas in the last three months about what the future of casino gaming looks like broadly. And I believe, I think everything Dennis said is axiomatic, totally 100% correct. But I believe, and you know, we're, we're all sitting here 45 years old and, and older. Uh, I'm happy you said we're 45 years old. I try to lower the bar a little bit. <laughs> um, I don't think He's greater than the us. gaming industry really gets, whether you're Vegas or Atlantic City, or anywhere else, really gets the importance of the millennials. The millennials are not going to Dennis's tracks. The millennials are not going to Atlantic City to gamble. They're going there to go to a pool party or a nightclub. Vegas just opened up a nightclub in the Cosmopolitan. They spent $130 million on a nightclub. In the first year, they made $180 million. 90% of those young folks, 
not fair to call them kids, but young folks. They're obviously over 21. Millenniums. They spent $180 million out of their pockets, the millennials. Not one dime did they spend in the casinos. It's so, so the casino floor is going to look very different than what it looks like today. Where we were used to going up and getting a stack of chips and playing blackjack or roulette or what have you. It's going to look well, very different. Just to add, the, the, the casino floors have changed over the years. Uh, when Nick and I were in the business down there, there were, there were more crap pits than, than they uh, exist today. You go into Harris, for example, you're lucky if you find three car because the demographics has changed. And as, as the those, aging of the population, yeah, that's the, right. the, the, they're into the technology new. more, into, into technology games. So he's right. It will change. But uh, the point is, it's got to be more than just gaming. We understand that. What happened to Atlantic City, they got caught in the middle of the change and didn't adapt, and they became extinct to a certain degree. And if they don't adjust, and we don't provide the resources through other gaming uh, activities to create a transition fund for horse racing and for AC, they're not going to make it. They're not going to make that change because they don't have the funds to do it. Let me go back 20 years or even longer when I went to the Meadowlands, when the Meadowlands had a great restaurant, the old Meadowlands. And you couldn't get into it. Okay, that you couldn't get into the Meadowlands. The and Pegasus. It was, yeah. it was a place. People wanted to go to that Pegasus Club. People, it was a venue. It was something that people from New York would, would, would run over, take the bridge, specifically no the question. tunnel, to go to the Meadowlands. Then what happened to the Meadowlands? So you're in the horse business for 35 years. What happened? What didn't happen to the Meadowlands that should have happened is the state kept telling us in the horse industry, look at this place. One day we're going to have casino gaming here. And it didn't happen. It kept getting pushed back and pushed back and pushed back. We go, you know, we're trying to lobby our legislators and the governor for casino gaming. So we go to all the surrounding areas that have gaming, Pennsylvania, you know, New York, um, we see that the cars that are in those parking lots are 50% Jersey. Jersey plates. You know, so all our gaming here in New Jersey, all that revenue that should be happening here is moving to other states, and we need to get it back. We need our legislature, which I believe they will do, to support the effort to get it back. Where yeah, the well, let me, let me say, goes, you know, I, I was in the middle of this for the last, I don't know how many years, but the idea is this. Dennis is correct. We lost $2 billion worth of taxable revenue. Where did it go? It went to these other states. So our effort is not to hurt the gaming business. We want it to survive. So we want to change those locations like Pennsylvania did. Pennsylvania's success is that they moved up and down our borders and took our market out of here. And now New York is doing the same thing. So it's only logical that we put gaming in northern New Jersey. But and look at, look at Pennsylvania. Their tax... On slots is 55%, 55%, and their tax on table games is 16 Right. And look at us. Ours is 8%, plus the incentive tax of the right. CRDA, uh, all the way around. But not it, to be it, too controversial, but, you know, the eight casinos that are left like it this way. They call it resizing. Uh, I call it, you know, a disaster, because now you have, as we talked about, the unemployment and the other problems that go along with that. So the eight that are left are making money. Some of them are doing very well. well I think what so Bill they don't want to see a change. What Bill said, you know, maybe before or during the show, is that, you know, I just heard about this new restaurant in the Cosmopolitan and all the rest. Right. They People want to go there because it's a venue. I mean, Tao. I know that Tao has the high, is the highest grossing restaurant in, in the country today. Yep. Um, because, and, and it's... People want to go there. People want to go there. Tau is, you know... Try and, to get to Atlantic City. How do you get there? Tell me. You, 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 you pray you that you don't hit traffic on you the struggle. Can, you, could, you could almost, you, on a weekend, you could almost fly to Vegas before you can get to Atlantic City. The roads are horrible, okay? Mm-hmm. You get past Tom's River. They're still on the construction down there. The roads are jammed up going in. Why would anybody, if they could go to, to the sands up 78 or go to Aqueduct, or go to Queens, or whatever, want to f- spend three, four hours on the road to Atlantic City when they get a game that's closer to them. It's all about convenience gaming. Now here, that's all it is. Here, here's my question. Why have... Okay, I understand the reason for the Meadowlands, okay? You have the track. Mr. Grouse spent $110 million right. improving the, 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 the property. Why Bayonne? 
And what's the third? Uh, Jersey City and Bayonne. Why are those? They're all different. First of all, Meadowlands is a brand name. As you said, you know, people are very familiar with the, the highway connections, the transportation to Meadowlands. Right. And it's uh, a you, winner. You, you're going to have you, the, the, the mall over there, the shopping center, you have the stadium. It's Everybody knows it's, it's you know, winner. Giant Stadium has, has done that. I'll let Bill explain. I know we're very familiar with the Jersey City Project, but Bill, why don't you explain what Mr. Fireman was trying to Yeah, explain. just uh, for full disclosure, uh, Paul Fireman found a Reebok sports shoe, sold to Adidas a few years ago, and... Uh, Built a small little golf course. Exactly. Built a small little golf course, Liberty National, uh, which is a very spectacular project, uh, uh, golf course. Hosted uh, two Barclays. We'll have the Barclays uh, in a couple of years. But it's also going to have the President's Cup in 2017, which will get international attention. Uh, Paul Fireman had a, a, a design to build the golf course and then build housing around it. The market tanked in 08 and 09, as you well know. And so that ship has sailed. Rather than build housing... He believes, and he's, he's uh, hired uh, one of the finest gaming architects in the world, the, the gentleman who uh, designs for Steve Wynn, a mega iconic casino with 2,000 rooms and, and a gazillion restaurants and nightclubs and, and boats that allow people to get from Staten Island and Connecticut right into the property. Why that project is important is it complements the Meadowlands, Okay. The Meadowlands is unique. It's been something Ralph's been working on for, for a, a long, long time. And people recognize politics. As we said, the Meadowlands is... It's a no-brainer. And, and people also know Mammoth. Okay? Right. You know, those... Jersey City is such a big job, a $4.2 billion project, that I think its size and scope are what captivates the minds and gets people interested uh, in the political uh, uh, sphere in New Jersey. Now... Isn't it true that he's not asking for any subsidies from the state? No subsidies at all. No state subsidization. What was interesting is with all that and Monmouth in the poll that came out for where you want to have a casino, came out second ahead of Jersey City, which I thought was kind of interesting. What came out second? And Nick? Monmouth Park. Monmouth. And the other side of the coin is, in the, is also part of the poll, a, a percentage of the people don't want gaming. So I thought that was interesting. Plus, Monmouth came in second. The only thing I'm going to add to that, I think, once the people are educated about oh, the, I jobs understand that. the yeah. financial impact it will have and the support that we would be giving racing and also the, the, the rebuilding of Atlantic City, non-gaming projects, uh, I think people will understand. Ralph's right on. You know, when someone does a poll and they put out a poll and they say this percentage is in favor and that percentage opposes, it depends the questions you ask. Mm. So I've seen other polls where people support gaming, but you have to tie it into what Ralph's saying. You have to show the good that it's going to do for the state and the good that it's going to do for other industries. The decline of the horse industry, like you talked about at Meadowlands, is because we don't have the same tools to compete with other states. The other states, New York, Pennsylvania, and some of the other surrounding states, they have these racinos and casino gaming, and they get revenues for their purses Keep going up in New Jersey. Right, so they don't they don't down. care. It's subsidized. They, they, the racinos subsidize the racetrack. Right, basically right. what you're saying. Allows right. them to operate. But the right. tracks Jersey. came out. The two tracks. Well, but that, that's, but that's logical, Nick. I think because they're known. Because they're already no. gambling exactly. place. People they're known. So so they're right. they're exact. They're known. Would would you want a racino at Monmouth? Absolutely, we want one. We've been pressing for it since the late '90s. We think it's vital to. The area, but but what, what I, it's done for Yonkers is unbelievable. What it's done for Aqueduct. See, he's right. It would work there. But the idea is the resistance he's going to get is not for me. It's going to be from those political circles that don't want any competition at all. In other words, those influences are there. All right, this but, makes but, sense. But when you're but when, view, when a state has high unemployment, high taxes, mm-hmm. you're talking right. sense. Okay, you, you, you're not gaining anything. Okay, you're, I mean what, what we're talking about, you know, just in, in general, what you bring up with politics, politics, okay, politics. Is How no do you question. stand in the way of billions of dollars worth of investment? I, I mean, jobs, the creation of jobs, the creation of the entertainment industry, the hospitality industry, the food industry. You're bringing everything there. I mean, let's look, you know. Jersey City today is not the Jersey City. No, it's a spectacular t- uh, it's property. A different, it's a different market. Totally different city. And people feel a lot better about Jersey City than they did 
a few short years ago. It's but got part a layer, it's but, got but, a vibrance. But, but what you brought out before, the key to Jer- why Jersey City is doing well is the path for certain businesses and the ferries. The ferry, the ferry system today, any, especially, and I've done shows in New Jersey, on the, the transit-oriented developments right. is the key to the success of the tri-state region. Morristown has a good transit oriented right. development. Jersey City has a, a good, you know, mm-hmm. that's important. And if you can have it on the transit or you can have it on the ferry, you can have it on others. And people will go. They do they the, the ferry, they do the train. But, but our view for Monmouth Park and the vision there is to create more of an entertainment area. We have mm-hmm. plans for a concert venue, water theme park. You know, and what we would like to do so we don't hurt the casinos because we want them to survive is we'd like the casinos to come in on a dollar lease and take over the gaming at Monmouth Park. Be the operator. And that way That's what can place. happen is that they benefit from it. For someone to drive from Monmouth Park area now to Atlantic City, they're going to go a few times a year. But if you had a casino there, the people that are inclined to gamble will come there on a regular basis. The casinos will but do better. Know, but, you know, it's, an in- it's interesting. The conversation in New Jersey cannot be about Atlantic City anymore. The governor gave it a five-year moratorium. It's got to be about what's best for the entire state. Right. And casino expansion, wherever you're going to put it, is good for Atlantic City and and the allied industries that come out of casino expansion. That's the. Uh, You're only open 57 days a year, correct? Well, we have 71 days of racing, which we've cut down. We used to be in excess of 200 days. Used to have a circuit in New Jersey. But what we learned is in order to compete with the other states that have higher purses, we had to cut our racing in half in order to keep the purses high enough to attract the horses. So if we had more gaming, if we had casino revenue, we would go back to year-round racing. And I think Bill's comment is perfect. Look, we're talking about the gaming business for the state of New Jersey, not for any particular region. But what works for us, the five-year moratorium did not work for the state of New Jersey. It failed bitterly. The rebel was uh, was their referendum on gaming, and if it, it 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 destroyed it, it was self it was ill conceived from the beginning, and all it did was destroy the town. So now they got to rebuild it. How are they going to rebuild gaming uh, in the state if we don't expand it? It's not going to happen in yeah. Atlantic City. What happened? The rebel was a couple of billion dollars yeah. investment. Yeah. The point and, four. And, and and it had a where's subsidy. Where's the value? Where's the value from the state? Where's and a subsidy from the state. A lot of subsidy. And right now, it's just sitting there. It's sitting there vacant. Vacant. Mothball. Rotting. Mold is growing inside. Would you invest in a place that uh, is worth three cents on a dollar? No. that's what, Now, well, I mean, that's what's happened to why, the why, how, how do you compare what happened in Connecticut, you know, with Mohegan Sun mm-hmm. and the others? Why were they successful? Well, don't forget, those were the first two properties built in the state. And they were on tribe, tribal grounds. They were built by the Indians. And they had a sweetheart deal. And you know what? Here's what else is interesting. Protectionism and politics is why Atlantic City's where it's at, period. Right. The protectionism, when you have a monopoly and you think you don't have to look over your shoulder, competition is what makes America great. Atlantic City didn't have any competition I mean, look, until recently. Ralph's, and now it's either Ra- got to Ra- Ralph specifically said it. These casinos don't want any more competition. They just want to, they know that four or five have closed. But their business model is going to fall would apart. Would you want competition? No, I wouldn't but want Mike, competition. But Mike, their model is going to fall apart. As more competition comes in, whether it comes from us or outside of the state, they're going to deteriorate further. I think they're smart enough to understand that there has to be expansion. The question is how? When? And well, I think I think the handwriting's on the wall that uh, it's it, when is now. Mm. I mean, you can't you can't kick the can down the road much longer. I mean, eventually, and we brought it up between the shows. Eventually, there's going to be casinos in New York. We we know that the Catskills is is first. We know that there that there's a possibility of Orange County, you know, which is convenient. When this happens, mm-hmm. you know. The window is open today, as one would say. The window doesn't always remain open. You're 100% right. The first mover is very job. important. I guess very job. important. They get the jobs. They get the, the investment. They get the benefits. Every day New Jersey waits is another day Atlantic City is going to bleed, 
and the state's missing an opportunity. We don't know what the world's going to look like a year from now, let alone three years from now. We don't know if people will want to invest. When I say people, the banking and investment community, when these casinos right. are I, opening I, up I, right across I, the river. I remember when I was with a private <clears throat> equity firm, when Revel was planned, mm. and the amount of money, and everybody was saying, you know, maybe we'll take a piece of the transaction because they felt it was such a great deal. Because it was before 2006, you know, it was 2006, 2007, the economy was great, and then everything fell right. apart. Yep. So the question is, and nobody has a crystal ball, and my crystal apple is definitely not there. Do you see more off-track betting helping in the state? Off-track betting? The off-track betting can give you a Band-Aid, but, but it really doesn't give you the revenues that you need in order to be competitive with the surrounding states. The time for casino gaming in New Jersey is now. As you say, New York is inevitable. They're going to be building these. They're going to be taking more and more of our New Jersey customers from North Jersey. We've got to get ahead of New York, and that's why people like Ralph we're trying to get the referendum on this year because it was the right time and any delay is going to hurt us all. Mm -hmm. and, and, I, and I think what, what Bill brought up before is so appropriate. Today we have the millenniums running jobs and business. The reason that Airbnb has a $50 billion valuation, the reason that WeWorks is at $55 billion, the reason that Uber. Uber is doing over there is because these are being utilized by the millenniums. I was at a, a presentation where I heard the, the head of WeWorks, and he's correct. People, the, people want to be smaller entrepreneurs. You know, they, they want to operate. They, there's a different environment. They want to work together. They want to work in a different environment. And those people aren't running to a track, but they're on the internet 24 seven. Okay. They, they're, they're looking at this and they're thinking of sports betting and they're looking at the, at the world. And what we have to do is evolve. And part of the problems that R Ralph said specifically is, you know, when you have politicians, you're right. present company excluded. Okay. Not on this one. I'm okay. Right. Okay. This you're right. I'm right. Okay. When you have politicians and you have different things and then you have government, you have, you know, presidential elections. I think the last two weeks I've gained a lot of information on an idea of what the future of gaming is. I'd like to thank Ralph, Bill, Dennis and Nick. And I'll see you next week.